Hey guys, this is Sarah Elena. Welcome to the channel. If this is the first time that you've been on here, we help people relocate to Costa Rica. So if you're needing help with your relocation or a scouting trip, you can see the website down below and get in touch with me there. Uh, but today, so one thing that I love to do is I love having interviews. I love talking to guests. I love talking to people who are doing really cool things here in the country and just have really awesome projects going on. So this one definitely caught my eye. We have Marat here. He actually reached out to me and sent me information about the project they're doing. And I thought it was really cool. And I'm going to let, you know, him kind of take it away and tell you all about it. But it's, you know, a sustainable community that's outside of uh, Santa Teresa, which is down in the Nicoya Peninsula. It's kind of a little bit of a trek there, but it's really known for having beautiful nature, beautiful beaches. It's really a unique area. And I'm really excited to, you know, when I, he told me all about their program or, you know, what they're doing down there. I love the sustainability aspect and kind of what they're adding, you know, to the land that they're working with. So thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. Very welcome? nice to meet you. Yeah. So it's nice to chat and catch up a little bit. So I guess we'll just get into it. Like I have people who are interested in like more eco developments and sustainable developments. So do you want to, I guess, tell me a little bit about. Well, maybe like where you came from, how you ended up in Costa Rica, like how you got started with this and kind of what have like, how has it been transforming along the way up into what it is now? Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Kazakhstan myself. And last five years I've been living in Mexico, in Tulum, actually. And Tulum was a beautiful village that we all loved. And then pandemic happened and, you know, and things have happened to Tulum the way they have happened. And at one point, me and my friends, we just realized that we lost this kind of beautiful place towards, towards greedy developments and towards uh, Tulum becoming a, a, a huge city. And uh, there was always this kind of idea of like, oh, if we do things, we should do things right. And I was sitting on the beach. I was like, this is the chance to do things right. You know? And I have certain experience in construction and um, yeah, uh, massive events production and community building. So I was like, okay, let me go to Costa Rica because Costa Rica was always ringing the bell for 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 whatever, so many reasons, right? And uh, let me go and explore the places. And people from all over told me, like, if you if you're going to San, to Costa Rica, Santa Teresa should be your place. So I went to different locations, and I, then I came to Santa Teresa, and I was like, oh, like, yeah, really, it is the place. And the, the main idea, the main focus was that if we are going to, to do something, we shall not deplete the land. We shall reverse whatever was done to the land already. And we found this beautiful pasture land and it, it completely fell into all the check, it ticks all the marks, you know, like, okay, we are going to reforest the land, we're going to regenerate the soil. And that's how we started the project practically. We, we have four founding principles, which is regeneration, community, health and autonomy and autonomy came up after pandemic after the lockdowns after whatever has happened and after so many conversations that people had like oh let's just start living on the on the land and like living from the from the land and like giving back and being stewards of the land and that's how autonomy became the thing and regeneration of course as i mentioned you know to regenerate the soil and to reforest like how can we create a development which which is actually making a place better rather than just like cutting trees and, and building houses. And uh, communities also like from, the, from, the, from seeing how these new developments coming and they're creating this separation between local population and, and whatever people are coming and, and purchasing land. And then it's just like, you know, you have local servants, let's say, who are serving the community. And then they're like, you know, rich people are just living inside. And we're like, okay, no, we have to, we have to change it. We have... We cannot make a closed gated community. It has to be an open gated concept. People ha can come and enjoy it and like, you know, they all live together and we have to provide um, accessible housing for local community. We have to actually to help with our, our participation here it has to be visible as like a, if we're helping to people here rather than we're just giving and like coming here and like, oh, we're giving workspaces because it's a complete, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a complete non-true idea. Uh, and, and health as a, as a founding principle, we thought that the community has to be built on the ideas of longevity and vitality as we all understand this is a new kind of development. So this is like, it's not a, it's not a retiring community. It's not a party community. It's not a whatever community, but we are based on 
promoting healthy lifestyles for all the residents and whoever is involved in the life of the ark okay i love that that's super cool and i like how you mentioned like the more like a accessible housing for locals so what are you guys kind of doing in that in that aspect or what has been your idea with that because i've seen that where locals kind of get pushed out of where they were living because things have gotten too expensive yeah that, that's true. We're, we're starting from simple idea of uh, staff accommodation and from things that like people can rent for, from staff accommodation, of course, is going to be like free of charge. But then also like we have, it's not just like staff accommodation for people who work, but like staff accommodation for all their families and their kids and like creating a kindergarten here. So that's like they, they don't have the commute outside. And then the farm, which is we see already that we can be with our produce. We have a 15 acre permaculture farm. And this farm can bring down the price of the produce at least 30% down the market price that we see now in, in Santa Teresa and like and around. So, which we see as a general positive income for uh, outcome for the whole community, because then other whatever providers will have to come down with their costs as well. And and that's what we are hoping to because as we know, Santa Teresa is famous for pretty high prices. You know, it's a, it's a booming destination. It's a very hot market here. So, so that was the like the community aspect, let's say, and from the from that point of view, also we have certain dedicated dedicated areas where we are going to start from. It's not kind of hostels, but more of like midterm and long term accommodations, also for people because who who are coming and who want to make Costa Rica and Santa Teresa their home, because that's what we see a, a lot as well that people or I don't know, whatever, from whatever walks of life, they come here and they love the place, but they cannot afford to live here because half of the rain you have, half of the year you have a rain season and then the market is down, but then the, the prices in like, you know, Airbnb market and everything goes like high season and they just like prices go skyrocket and people just get pushed out from their long-term accommodations. So that's, it's it's a dynamic of a vocational place, and I believe what we want to do with the ark here in the area is to convert it into more of a place where people would really come and leave rather than just like come here and stay for four or five months a year. Yeah, I love that. I remember I had one client where I was looking for accommodation for him in Santa Teresa. It was just a single guy, and I couldn't even find a hostel, a bed in a hostel for less than a thousand dollars a month. It was yeah. insane. It was you know we ended up with a, he ended up with a shared house situation. But yeah, the prices are absolutely nuts over there. And I'll let people know. I'm like, it's pricey, you know? It is pricey. It is true. It, and it's, but it's also like, I think I always make a reference towards, uh, towards a snake biting its own tail, you know, because this is, and, and it, like, you cannot blame anything. It's things as they are, but like what we can do, we can, we can try to improve the situation. And, and this can only be done if there is a constant market, let's say, of people, if there are people who are living here year round rather than just like coming for four months because then you're going to have like long-term vehicles rental long, long-term rents of of places and people purchasing spaces uh, you froze for a second sorry <laughs> so people purchasing places and also even if people want to come and rent but exactly something like you know that you can rent for long term and the price can be from 600 500 800 dollars you know and, they, and you can have different level of accommodations, but at least something that would allow you to stay. Because if a foreigner wants to come here from wherever, they, they have to rent the, the, sp the space to leave. They have to rent a vehicle because you cannot operate here like walking. So then you, your expenses sum up to like two, two and a half thousand, three thousand dollars a month. Easy. Just like for this base. And then you have to eat. And uh, the price of food is extremely high here. So that's what I believe we want to do. We want to, be, to bring certain decency and understanding that things don't have to be that expensive and they, food can, can be organic and it can be clean and it can be at the same time accessible. And also to involve local community in, the, in participating, just not to see that like, oh, there are people who are coming and they're like rich people who are coming and they're doing their thing and we're just serving them. No, it has to be integration of people. You know, like that, like local people, lo local kids go to the kindergarten with the with the kids from the community, and that we together work at the farm and we together participate in the events. And then there's going to be no this feeling of like, you know, oh, let's there are some foreigners, tourists, and let's just take advantage of whatever like two months that they're that they're here and take as much money from them as we can. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that thought of like integration because I guess yeah, you see that in areas where you, 
where, yeah, if there's too much of a disparity there, then you will see a big separation. And yeah, I think it is important for the integration for sure. That's, that's super cool. I, I really love that. I think it's really beautiful what you guys are doing. Um, so, so you maybe like, give me a good timeline here. So when you came to Costa Rica, then you found, yeah. you said you traveled around a bit, you found this land. Um, how long have you guys been like working on this project there? And I, and I know that, okay, you're going to offer like the short term rentals, which is so cool. Cause like, that's going to be a beautiful experience for people. Long term rentals, always amazing. Please keep me updated on those. You know, like, <laughs> and then I know that, you know, you guys are going to be, you know, you well, you maybe you are, I think you already are like building and selling, you know, homes yeah. who do yeah. want to make that their full time home. Maybe you want to tell me a little bit about, I guess, the last sure. part too. Sure. And then, I, yeah, maybe just the overall timeline of, like how long have you guys been working on this project and like from it being that pasture to what it is now, like what do the changes look like? And then send me pictures so I can put them up on the video too. You know? <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. We, we found the land in May, 2021 where we were like searching all over back and forth and then due diligence process and contracting took us almost a year and in February, 2022, we signed the contract. So we broke ground and in March, 2022, so practically we're like a year and a little bit and two months on the land. And we started, of course, from like creating a master plan, making all the roads, horizontal works, which is the infrastructure, water, we're connecting the project to AYA. And, and, and it was also like understanding our fundamental principles, because from one perspective, you think that you know them from the beginning, like, you know, you have this kind of feeling like, OK, that's how it's supposed to be. But then at the same time, putting it on paper and making it guiding principles for the communities. We have 90 residential lots. And we were from the beginning understanding that we cannot allow people to make wells because if people are going to make 90 wells, it's going to be a, a, a catastrophic. It's going to be a disaster. for, and, and you know the situation with water here in, in so many places and dry seasons. So we were like, okay, we have to invest into the infrastructure of water. So that's what we were doing. And like we are finishing this infrastructure by October this year over the piping. And we started from the farm because also like, you know, it, it, it gave us a great understanding of like what the what grows, how does it work? It's a centropic farming. So now the farm is four acres and it's going to be 15 mm -hmm. acres, as I said, by the I hope by the end of this year. And it, wow. and it taught us. Yeah, it taught us a lot. We, we had already two harvests. We're, we're coming to, to get our third harvest now. And it's like three harvests in, the, in, in a year. And maybe we're going to get to like to four harvests in a year and then regenerating the soil like our productive level of the soil is only five centimeters because it was pasture land as i said for for 50 years so we have on five centimeters productive level uh, of the soil so like you know it, it took us also the some time like you know to, to create all these processes so we have a full-on permaculture team working on the on site and uh, making the farm so that that was a long process and it was like a great learning curve so now it's just the farm is just growing and like making the roads and making the lots you know all the legal processes so now pretty recently we got into the as you said correctly we we got into the sales phases so it's a we call the project regenerative residential neighborhood neighborhood so practically these are um agricultural agricultural lands from 5000 square meters going up to 10000 square meters which is like 1.2 acres to two and a half acres with a very low density uh because you know santa teresa again is a is a booming market and uh, i think it's a great thing that projects like us are here on the land because we can be stewards on the land and we can take care that people really follow the guidelines, follow the law practically, because the law is there, right? Like the density law is like 10% of the land, but then you know how it can happen sometimes in reality. Mm -hmm. So we are taking very strict measures to control the development that it's not above 10%, that people really reforest the land. We have created a, a circular economy idea where we're distributing 36% of the profit of all the project with all the residents. And it only works if you are following the guidelines if, and if you are reforesting your land. So practically this way, that's how we want to reforest 70% of the land. So we, we start planting our first thousand trees now in May. We're plan, planning to plant more than 6,000 trees. And, it's, uh, and it's, a, it's a beautiful process all in all. <laughs> so yeah, it's, we are going to offer short-term, long-term, mid-term and long-term accommodation. But yes, we're selling land. And I'm going to forward you more information about it. And we're selling land and we're building houses for people. 
and people can build houses according to the architectural guidelines that we have in place. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone who is interested, you can email me at Sarah at lostsarahlena.com and I'll forward you, you know, I'll send a nice template email that we can put together between the two of us that would give them the right information for this project. Um, but no, I mean, I think that is just so neat and it's, it's such a big project. So, so you, did you come to Costa Rica alone and then you like found someone who is an expert in permaculture? Like, how did you kind of gather the people who are around you, like also, you know, working on this? Because I there feel like- yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not a, uh, it's, it's, a combi- it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a combination of things um first of all the uh, of course there is a big part of mexico people who, who who lived with me in mexico and like and they were a core of the project in the beginning some of them stayed till now it's more of like Costa Rican team like local architects local engineers local of course legal and everything uh, architectural team joined from Mexico in the beginning. Uh, the head of permaculture is from Mexico. So it's, it's a very international team from all over the place, uh, all over the world. But of course, of a lot of people from Costa Rica, which are, which are contributing with their knowledge and understanding of how things are happening here. And, um, and yeah, as you said, it's, it's a huge project. We, the, the, our timeline is three years to make all the amenities, which we have in plan, uh, to, to literally develop them, but at the same time, we're starting already from this new year with our own programming, which is uh, practically, as I said, that we're healthy lifestyle oriented community. So we're starting with our new year, which is going to be towards like a conscious celebration of uh, ending of the year and conscious celebration of beginning of the year. And, um, and when we started the project, the whole idea was like, so what it is, what do we have to have in the village, in our home? for our families and for our friends and whoever is going to be joining to comfortably live in this kind of environment, you know, so that we could change this perception that you have to live in the city. How do we, how do we make life here comfortable? And of course, like, you know, we, we love the comfort. We love, like, we love nature, but at the same time, there has to be a combination of like a modern style living and like, and living in nature. So that's how we came with an idea from kindergarten up to, up to, private working lounge, longevity clinic, uh, retreat center, spa, and uh, you name it, you know, sport areas and uh, community centers, cafes and clubhouses. But at the same time, not to make it a uh, Boca Raton uh, closed gate <laughs> community, <laughs> but, but to make it like an open project, which is essentially is going to become, as we see, the center of life of Santa Teresa, because the beach is there and it's great, you know, the beach life is great. But then you're kind of getting tired of the same like beach street, one, one street, and you want to have something different. You want to have different experience. And that's, that's us, we believe. So, yeah. So it wouldn't be a gated community. So some that I've seen, okay, well, I know this is like, like somewhere where let's say the amenities and those things are all public. And then maybe let's say for people's private residences, that's where maybe it would break off into being gated or is it just going to be all open or I don't know. It's, it's all going to be gated, but at the same time, we are only restric- restricting the vehicle circulation inside. So people will be able to come and like we're creating parking spaces for people to just like come and then enjoy like e-biking or shuttles or walking Absolutely. all over the property and then enjoy the amenities. And uh, it's our part to take care of security and safety for our residents, of course, but at the same time, you know, not to, not to close the gates. So it's a Imagine it's just like walking in without any registration or anything. You just have to leave your car and then you just like, it's yeah. a huge 200 acre park. We're making hiking, biking trails. We have uh, something like 50 acres of, of, of a jungle, which we obviously didn't touch. And we want to make hiking trails there. And we're protocoling now all the wild species that live there. So we want kind of little, our own wildlife refuge there. So yeah, so it's, imagine it's going to be like a huge park which is going to have residential aspect inside with all kinds of different amenities that you, that you can come and enjoy. That is so cool. I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I think that's going to be amazing. I'm excited to visit as well. I would love to come for a visit. Please come. Please um, come. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you guys have already started building. So like, is the house that you're in right now, like that's, you're there? Like that, you're no, right? that's, our, that's our little field office. Uh, we, we started building. Yeah. We're starting doing the sport areas this year. Hopefully we're going to finish something before the new year. We're starting our like reception and like a proper office. 
We're starting with some model houses. Uh, mm -hmm. There are people who already built their houses, people who are starting their houses like now. So out of 90 lots, we have 74 left to sell. And uh, we're starting building a little hotel as well, so which will like will allow people to stay like long term. And so yeah, so that's that's in, and of course the farm is uh, is our thing. We start doing own own farms for people who already live in the ark. Because this is another thing is like to be great to convert most of this place, not just to reforest it, but just to reforest it with the perspective of productive forest. You know, fruit trees and uh, and you know making it a syntropic farm. You basically mimic how nature nature develops. And nature never has monocrop cultures. You know, it's always layers of things. So practically, you grow in three, four layers, and that's how you can intensify what what you're getting out from the land, and uh, and at the same time enriching the soil. So that's how we are hoping to reforest most of the most of the lots here. That's awesome. Well, I mean, all I can say, I, th I think it's just really cool. It's, this talk has definitely made me more excited to come visit. And it sounds like, yeah, somebody wants to, to enjoy nature, be around good people, be in a nice sense of community. And yeah. just that, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people are looking for that lifestyle. So I, we, we see a lot of interest. We see a lot of interest from people who are, and we have the same <laughs> the same line that people come to, 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 to us they're like i'm just i'm just done with living in, in in the city i'm just i'm just tired and i really like i think we we are coming in the to a point in the i don't know development or you name it <laughs> what it is now <laughs> where people kind of start valuing the experience of their day-to-day -day life way more than just being in somewhere and somewhere where they have to be because they have to make money there and also like all the technologies now allow us to live practically anywhere and to work from anywhere and like and a lot of people just like start asking themselves like, so why exactly do i live in new york like aside of like you know why can't i live in nature and then coming maybe to new york for for the vacation and the, and actually enjoying the city way more rather than just like being there because like it's a normal conversation when you go to people and then they're like, yeah, I'll leave because of the uh, rich, uh, rich cultural, uh, cultural life. And then you're like, so when was the last time you've been in the theater? And they're like five months ago. <laughs> like, okay. So maybe you can be coming like once a half a year and just like have a week or two weeks of like really cool uh, cultural experience. And that's what we have a lot of interest in. And it's amazing. I think people are changing towards living the way we are supposed to live because we are part of nature, right? So let's let's get back to this. Yeah. I mean, I noticed that a lot, you know, especially with like COVID and everything. I, I mean, I, I still hear all the time during my calls. People are just, I want to get off of this rat race. You know, I took the time. I had the time to slow down and really think about what I wanted with my life. You know, a lot of, you know, I work with a lot of families with kids. You know, I want my kids to be out more in nature. I don't want them cooped up in the house on electronics all the time. You know, I think like there's a ton of people just waking up to this. And it's like, I think it's really exciting and it's awesome. And it's great that you guys are going to be kind of providing one of those avenues and spaces for that. And who knows? Maybe like, I mean, there's other people doing it too. But I mean, you know, it's it's an inspiration. And maybe. It is an, and, and, and I think it's also, it's, it's, a, it's, it's great that you're mentioning that other people doing it too, because. I had this conversation quite, quite recently and uh, because there are obviously like great communities developing all over Costa Rica. And I, I don't know why Costa Rica is so famous for developing intentional communities, but, but it is what it is. And that's a great thing. Like, how can we also bridge this cooperation between those communities? How can we, if, if we want to, again, do things right, how do we make cooperation rather than competition? How can we foster like an exchange information and to, to, to make it proper, you know, like, and, and exactly, not to feed the rat race, but just like now we're feeding the rat race from the perspective of all, all building all these like regenerative or sustainable communities, but but to be an example that we want to see in the in in the world, and also yeah, it's a great thing about like that you mentioned about kids, which is of course a, 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 a huge component to every community, whatever it is created. How can we find this sweet spot where they're not growing as Tarzans or Mowgli's, but mm -hmm. at the same time they are. They, they understand, they, they have the practic, practical knowledges of how to grow their own food, how to, how to make things with their hands, you know, we, we, how yeah. to create things, how to build things. But at the same time, they're kind of 
they have this touch of conscious technological development because the, the development is so so quick that we don't have to feed them all with this because there, there are so many tests and tries now on the market. It's not like a, there was a TV set when we were <laughs> young and that's the only TV set, that's it that you can see. Now there are like billions and billions of things and like, you know, it's not necessarily that they have to know everything, you know, not everything is here to stay. Exactly. So many things are not going to be there. So, so yeah, that's, I think, what we want to, to create. We're creating this kind of combination of conscious technological solutions and using or consciously using or taking advantage of the, of the technological development that we have now and at the same time using this ancient wisdom and uh, being in, in one with nature. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm on board with it. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting for you here. I know. Actually, I do, I do want to come over for We'll talk about that after. I would actually love to come over there. That'd be great. Because I got like, you know, I'm in Hako. So I got, well, I'm in Playa Mosa in Hock, near Hako. There's a the boat taxi. I mean, I have my truck, but it's five hours, like from Hako leaving my house all the way to there. It's five hours with the ferry okay. and all that. Yeah. I'm like, it must be easier to leave, leave the car <laughs> and just boat, boat taxi over there. It's one hour. There is a boat taxi to Montezuma, right? Yes, there's a boat taxi to Montezuma. And maybe it goes from Montezuma to Santa Teresa now, but... But I would almost rather do that. But but there are easy ways. So now people know, like, if you don't mind getting on a boat taxi, fly into San Jose, take an hour and a half drive over to Aradura or a taxi, you hop on a boat taxi, boom, you're almost there, you know? And there is not gonna, there is going to be a new marina now in, in Tambor Bay. Oh, okay. Yeah, there is, gonna, there is coming a marina. So, like, I think it's gonna, they're going to increase. Because it's, it's so natural that we would have a better kind of marine connection more than than a ferry but something a little bit nicer maybe and quicker you know <laughs> so to different locations right because in costa rica this could be like it, it, you're kind of yeah but uh but it doesn't exist so i i hope with the, this marina in tambor it's gonna it's gonna develop more well we'll we'll check back on that in about 20 years and we'll see what happens yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> Five, seven years later. Yeah, they're going to be doing that marina, you know. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> yeah, happen. Sometimes things do happen fast here. So. <laughs> Sometimes, they, and that's, the, for instance, our we have now the third airport that's coming here. Kobano is going to have an airport, oh. which is just like 15 minutes drive from us. And there was, before it was only Tambor, which took you like 40, 45 minutes. Now there is Manzanillo and, uh, wow. and Kobano is launching operations in like December. Cool. So it's also, yeah, so it's also like, you know, my, 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 I, I think in general you see this gives you a great perspective of how Santa Teresa is developing. And I love that there are many people who are building big projects. Like my friends bought 50 hectares in Manzanillo and they made Walder School. And, mm. uh, and, it's, and it's great. And they are going to expand operations up to 1,000 students. So wow. So this is going to be big. So like, I, I think there are many people who are like, like us all, like, you know, who see this development towards people switching to living in nature. And then the moment we're going to have this infrastructure, then people are going to come because I, uh, there are obvious obstacles now, like, like healthcare, you know, like what, yeah. if, like for people in age, like what if something happens and there are the, the closest proper hospital is in only in San Jose. So like, the, but now we, we're getting a new, clinic that is getting built in the, in town and there are new new big schools coming you know and like projects like us so i think it's becoming a new way of living but at the same time like it's a new old way of living where we are living on the ground living from the ground taking care of the ground and at the same time living in nature that's how things are supposed to be right yeah that's how it's supposed to be well I think it's awesome that, you know, you guys are pioneering this over there in your area. And, and yeah, I mean, if anybody wants more information about what Marat's doing there um, with the ARC and all the information about them, maybe to keep on tabs if they ever have long-term rentals or if they can come, if you wanted to go short-term rent, just to visit and enjoy the grounds and see how they develop over the years. Maybe you're watching this five years later. So who knows? If somebody's watching this five years from now. I'm sure they've made a lot of progress by then. <laughs> yeah. Of course, with like, I mean, even the property sales, you know, we have, I have people ask me about property all the time. If that sounds like something that, you know, would interest you, then, I mean, you guys do tours. I mean, like, I'm sure you schedule and show people yeah, around the area and explain everything. And 
Well, cool. Well, I know I don't, we're actually already at 30 minutes. It goes by so fast. I'm telling you, you could, we can talk about something for a long time, but for the viewers, you know, for their time, we'll wrap up here and, uh, you know, my email will be down there in the description below. If you would like direct connection with him, I will, you know, connect you guys via email and send you all the information. Yep. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for what you're doing, because I think it's, it's, a, it's, I, I have never seen such a great resource for like, you know, like moving to some country and it's, and it's amazing what you're doing. I think you're helping to many, many people there. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that.